Hello everybody and welcome back to another video by Dissociated. This is a very tired, travel weary Chloe and I'm making a vlog today. A few people asked us, how do you travel when you have DID? to fly to Paris tomorrow and I have got myself to a hotel for the night which is very near the airport and I'm going to talk you through how we set up the day before to travel the next morning because when you have DID and you're sharing a body with more than one person you don't always know who's going to wake up or what they're going to need or what they might leave behind. So first of all I have a comfort object for the littles this is our bed that we take around with us wherever we go. It's always nice to have a grounding comfort object. Even if it's not grounding or comforting for you specifically, it's important to compromise when you have alters. Another thing that we do is ensure that we have everything in the same place for the morning. So right here we have a pile of stuff that we'll need to get ready. Our clothes for the day, toothbrush, toothpastes in the bathroom, hairbrush, medication the bag which we'll be taking with us, our shoes and a pre-packed travel case. So the only thing that will need to go in there is what I'm wearing right now. This is what's needed for the morning and this is the other bag. So everything is in one place so that it should be <laughs> impossible to forget anything. I know it can be very tempting if you're very tired to just want to throw things around the place or leave things wherever they land. But when you have the ID, it's important to have things at least slightly organized in a space where people can look and think, okay, I'm not sure what's going on right now, but I know these are my things. And it's easy to work out what needs to be done based on the clues that have been left around. I'll also be writing notes about how to get through the morning, what we need to do. That will be kept with us through the rest of the day tomorrow. This will have information such as our flight information, how to get to the airport, what to do when we're at the airport, and how to leave the airport so that everybody will have that with them. So yes, this is our preparation for the night before. All alarms are set. I will be leaving notes and things in obvious places for anybody who wakes up, which is usually me, Chloe maybe Kyle, maybe Sally, or it could be anyone else. And hopefully, even if it's a little, with the information I'm leaving and easily accessible items, we should be okay. Good night. Good morning, friends. So it's about 4am right now. And the first thing I want to say is it's far too early to be awake. I was the one who woke up in the body. It's Chloe again. Kyle's been out a little bit this morning. We are about ready to go and get on the bus to the airport. We tend to switch a lot more often when we're tired, so I'm just going to keep you updated on how everything goes. Thanks, crossed. Okay, so still so Chloe, we made it to the airport, so this is really weird to talk in public to a camera but we made it. We've got about an hour and a half till our gate details are released for the flight so right now it's just time to get breakfast. I tried to pick something that everybody would like because the littles are close as well so I need to be careful to avoid any positive triggers, toy stores with cuddly toys in and just generally be aware of trying to keep the protectors as close to the front as possible. So we're headed to the gate now. There hasn't been too much switching. Me, Kyle and Jade have been pretty much co-con most of this time with like switching between the three of us in terms of who's co-con. This has been pretty painless and we've not had any issues so that's positive. The most important thing is always organisation, writing notes, making sure your communication is up especially with your protectors. So this is how it works for us. We've had a lucky one this time.
everybody this is Chloe still there's been a decent amount of switching today we really really struggled as we were queuing to actually get on the plane our chronic fatigue hit us quite brutally we were really struggling to stand up and the rapid switching was incredible switching can change or become more frequent or less frequent in some systems when there's a lot of stress and by that point we just wanted to get on the plane we were very very tired and we were not grounded whatsoever. I couldn't hear much of anything. It felt like there was cotton wool balls in my ears. I was swaying on my feet. I could feel myself swaying on my feet. I was in and out, in and out. These switches were going back and forth and I was really hoping that nobody would notice. If anybody did, they didn't say anything about it. But now we're at the hotel. I hope that that gave you a tiny weeny little insight of what it can be like to travel with the ID. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you some pointers on how to make it easier for you and your system. Hello! So Sally wants to front and I'd like to go draw at a coffee shop. So I'm going to go and find us something to eat. Wish me luck. I don't know much French and um, hopefully we won't get lost. So got my glasses on so I can see where I'm going. Here begins the adventure, I guess. See you guys in a bit. Britain today. Once again, we have to do our packing organization. We need to be writing notes. We need to make sure that we've got everything sorted for the way back home. I know that for some people, the trip back is going to be a little bit more stressful, especially if somebody fronts who, for example, isn't particularly used to traveling. So somebody who's not me or Kyle. <laughs> I'm sorry, stretch. So, for example, somebody who's not me or Kyle or Sally might be a little bit more stressed out, especially because this is France and a lot of the signs will be in French. Usually there's English translations all over though, and I'm sure there will be in an airport, but it's still like an added level of stress for um, alters who are less used to this kind of stuff. I tried to make sure that we ate a breakfast that will power us through as much of the day as we can. We need to make sure that we've got water with us constantly, anything that can help keep our brain running as smoothly and as functionally as possible will be helpful. I'm going to make sure that our bag is completely packed. We've figured out how we're getting to the airport. We're going to get there three hours earlier just to be safe. Thankfully, the flight is only 45 minutes 
and the only other thing that we need to do is make sure that we check out of the hotel fine and that we don't get charged for anything that we don't need to be charged for and also to figure out how we're getting back home from London. I guess I should get started on that, huh? It would be so nice if we could just like, oh I know where we're going, okay let's go rather than you know having to think about how this could possibly affect everyone in the system make sure that we've got our grounding objects nearby in easy reach make sure as many people as possible know where to find things make sure we've got notes in as many places as we could possibly have pockets handbags outside pockets of handbags suitcases purse anywhere somebody could look for answers there needs to be something they'll be like oh okay okay so this is what i need to do it is stressful as well having to make sure that protectors are near the front all day it takes a lot of like brain energy gives us a lot of headaches because it's like an internal pressure in your head trying to make sure somebody is close to the front or easily reachable especially if something does go on inside or you know somebody has a flashback or there's some kind of upset or two or more altars get into a fight or you know god forbid a new altar is discovered or you know something like that we can't always guarantee that somebody's gonna be there when you need them so we need to prepare as best we can for as many situations as we can we like to try and have internal system meetings when we can before we travel it's not always easy to do that especially because generally before we travel after we travel the body is exhausted the mind is exhausted the ulcers themselves we're all exhausted <laughs> so it's making the most of your situations and trying to prepare preparation is key communication is so important trust in each other that you can get through this together and that you're all doing your best means everything is gonna be fine. I'm gonna take you home with us and hopefully this will be an interesting vlog for you guys. I don't know how educational it will be because this has been kind of a whirlwind work experience and we've got some very 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 exciting news and videos coming soon to show you um, and what we've done here. I'm so excited to share with you guys i really think that it's gonna make a big difference to the way that mental health is treated in the future and the way we approach therapy for both inpatient and outpatient not just in the uk and in other parts of the world but in america as well especially after we did our collaboration our little skype collab with the labyrinth system about the differences in healthcare in the uk and the us I think this is going to be a game changer and I really believe in it. So I hope you guys enjoy what we've done here. More info to come. So I should start writing those notes. <laughs> See you guys later. tired now. Something about traveling is exhausting to most people but when you have DID switching can be exasperated by stress and pressure and even changes in environments can be triggering or just encourage certain alters to front, not necessarily for negative reasons, but just as a protective mechanism as it's designed to do. Switching is very, very tiring. Sometimes even being co-conscious can be very tiring. It's like having somebody right up in your personal space all the time and it can be overwhelming sometimes. Especially with our system, we get a lot of switching headaches where when we switch, we then usually get quite a bad headache that comes through afterwards. Traveling with DID can be dangerous, but traveling without DID can be dangerous. As long as you're learning to work with 
what your body and brain can do. You're accepting that these things might happen and making preparations for what happens if I do switch? What happens if I dissociate? What happens if I suddenly can't think and I don't know where I'm going? Making preparations and arrangements for in case that does happen, rather than trying to bulldoze your way through it and being like, no, that's not going to happen. I can do this just like anyone else can. Yes, you can do this. Your DID doesn't mean that you can't do this, but you can't do it just like anyone else. You have to tailor these experiences to you and to your personal system and to how your system deals with things. You need to take into account your triggers, where you're going, what the temperature is like, what the seasons are like there. Try and make sure you have positive triggers to hand if you need them. If you don't know what positive triggers are, we made a video about this. It was me and Kyle who did quite a thorough job of explaining. So if you are interested in that, I must encourage you to check it out. But if you do need somebody urgently, for example, your protector, then it's a good idea to have things on hand. Also stimulating toys. Some people like to use fidget spinners, some people like scraps of cloth that feel very nice and soft or something that's very grounding. Something that can help you focus and stay in the real world rather than drifting off into your stress space, into the void, dissociating. That kind of pressure to try and keep your brain under control for an extended period of time can be exhausting and really wipe you out. So after traveling, we always need some time to recuperate. This could just be a day to like a week. So be aware of your limits and just try and learn, learn gently. It's absolutely possible to do anything that anyone else would do without the ID. The ID is a coping mechanism that allows us to live our lives just like anybody else can. We just need to manage it in a slightly different way. I hope that you found this vlog educational and interesting, at least slightly. I know that it was a bit slapdash. <laughs> we were mainly focusing on getting here and Kyle, for example, just completely refused to film because he was like, no, I don't care about filming right now. I need to get us safe and that's the last thing on my mind. So I know it's been a lot of me in this video and you haven't seen many other people dealing with things except Sally's been co on quite a lot in the morning. I hope that you found this still portrays an accurate representation of our journey to Paris for a business trip with dissociative identity disorder. Don't forget to stay on the channel and check out our other videos about DID, especially the Debunking DID series, which is about all the psychology and the biology, the medical aspects of this disorder, what goes into it, how it works, and we have all the studies that we use and all the medical journals. Everything is linked in the description box below so that we can encourage you to do your own research. Lots of love, everybody. Bye.